Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick Fuentes from the Chrome OS Developer Relations team. Today, we're going to give a brief overview of why and how to optimize your Android app for Chrome OS. Millions of Android apps run on Chrome OS devices today. And if your app is already available in Google Play, there's a good chance that it's one of them. We've heard from developers who've already optimized for Chrome OS that they've seen increases in engagement and time spent in their apps. Before we get started, I'd like you to take a few seconds to think of an app that provides a really great experience for you when you use it on both a phone and a Chromebook. When I imagine this, I envision different experiences between small and large screens, and many of our users will expect as much. Because our Android apps can be run in both situations, let's make sure that we provide a great experience on both phones and Chrome OS. Thankfully, the same work that you do to support other large screen devices, such as tablets and foldables, should cover most or all of your concerns. With that said, there are a few common issues developers run into when they optimize for Chrome OS, and we'll cover some of those today. Be sure to stick around until the end to learn how a new publishing capability can make your app stand out compared to the rest. One of the most important things to do for Chrome OS optimization is to ensure that apps have support for using input devices, like keyboard, mouse, and stylus. About 90% of Chrome OS users interact with apps this way. Some devices don't even have a touchscreen as an option. Support for input devices doesn't only matter for Chrome OS either. It's also common for users of large screen devices like foldables and tablets to use a keyboard, mouse, or stylus. If you only do one thing with your app, try to use it with a keyboard, mouse, and stylus to make sure the basic functionality works without a touchscreen. Once you've ensured that the basics work, there's much more you can do to enhance your experience, such as adding thoughtful focus states or adding context menus to your app. Input methods are critical for our users' ability to interact with our apps, so I highly recommend checking out the key to keyboard and mouse support for more guidance on the topic. Once we're confident that our apps work with common input methods, it's time to think about how they're going to look on a large screen. On Chrome OS devices, users will see your familiar app in a different way through freeform window resizing. You may even be surprised by how your app looks in this new environment. Thanks to Chrome OS's improved window compatibility features, users can keep your app in a familiar aspect ratio if it's currently only optimized for phones. With that said, all this extra space on the screen means there's much more that your app can do to help users. Let's take advantage of it. If you're new to large screen optimization, the topic may seem daunting. To make this easier, we're creating new tooling and guidance, and the effort will benefit your app across tablets, foldables, and more. To learn more about the latest best practices when implementing UI with our new UI toolkit, Jetpack Compose, I highly recommend checking out Compose, implementing responsive UI for larger screens. If you or your design team want to learn more about how to design for large screens first, be sure to check out Designing for Larger Screens, Canonical Layouts, and Visual Hierarchy to learn more about straightforward ways of thinking about designing your UI with Chrome OS and all display sizes in mind. Another common issue we find with device support for Chrome OS is binary compatibility for games or apps with C++ code. Different devices have different CPUs and instruction sets. Because of this, we need to make sure that our app supports all of the relevant application binary interfaces, or ABIs. If you only run your app on Android phones in the past, you may have only focused on ARM devices. However, Chrome OS devices often use chips with x86 architectures. Thankfully, due to binary translation, many Android apps will run on an x86 Chrome OS device even if an x86 compatible version isn't available. However, this binary translation can hinder your app's performance and hurt battery life, so it's better to provide x86 support explicitly. Because Gradle builds for all non-deprecated ABIs by default, most apps already have x86 support. However, if you've written or added platform-specific code or libraries to your app, and you're using ABI filters in your build.gradle, you should make sure that your app has support for x86 devices. It's time to talk about one of my favorite topics, testing. The best way to ensure that your app works well on Chrome OS devices is to try it on Chrome OS devices. 
There are many affordable Chrome OS devices available and ready to run your app. So I recommend trying your app on one today if you can. If you don't have a physical Chrome OS device, there are still plenty of things you can do to test your app. For example, you could still test a keyboard or mouse on an ordinary Android handset by plugging them in via the USB port. If you haven't tried the new desktop emulator in Android Studio, it's another great option for trying your app in a large screen setting with resizable windowing. When you create a new virtual device in Android Studio, look for the desktop category and you'll see a few options. Check out the announcement on chromeos.dev for more details about the new desktop Android virtual device. And if you're looking for a checklist of things to try out while you're testing, be sure to check out the large screen app quality guidelines on developer.android.com to find a rigorous set of checklists and tests that can provide confidence that your app is ready to shine on large screens. So you already have a great app in Google Play and millions of users on Chrome OS devices are within your reach. How do you make sure your app is available to them? Go to the Google Play console for your app's developer account and check the device catalog to see which devices are supported by your app. It's a good idea to review the supported and excluded lists regularly to help ensure the widest availability of your app. When looking at the device catalog, you might be surprised to see some devices aren't supported. Often, when a device isn't supported, it's because there's an entry in the app's manifest declaring that it requires features that aren't available on the device that's unsupported. An example of where we see issues with manifest entries is with camera requirements. Some of you might be wondering, Chromebooks have cameras, so why is this an issue? The reason in this situation is there are several different camera features that a device can support, and not every device has all of them. In this case, even though our Pixelbook has a user-facing camera, it's unsupported because it doesn't have a world-facing camera. This is because the android.hardware.camera feature entry in the manifest refers specifically to a rear or world-facing camera. If any camera will meet your app's needs, you'll want to use the manifest entries on screen. Note the use of required equals false as well as camera.any. In general, if a feature isn't absolutely necessary for your app, it's best to specify in your manifest it's not required. The camera is just one example of a required feature that could limit your app's reach, so be sure to check out the hardware features documentation page on developer.android.com to see a full list of hardware features to be aware of in the Android ecosystem. Once we're sure that our app is available on Chrome OS devices, we'll want to show potential users what our app looks like on Chrome OS. I mentioned at the beginning that I'd cover a new capability, and I'm happy to share that the Play Console now allows you to upload screenshots specifically for different form factors, like Chrome OS. To learn more about this new functionality and best practices for publishing for various form factors, be sure to check out Make Your App Shine for all devices in Google Play. That's all for today. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out chromeos.dev for a wealth of detailed technical documentation, product news, and case studies showcasing how other Android developers optimize for Chrome OS. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to the newsletter to stay up on all the latest updates. And lastly, remember to visit the large screen sections of developer.android.com and the material design guidelines for more resources to help you to design and build for Chrome OS and large screens.